The next part of the process is called raising the cask. Now this involves standing the casks up within what we call the end hoop. Now the hoops which we use are called truss hoops. These are basically your working hoops. These ones take all the hammering and all the battering. The heavier ones are what we call plate hoops. Um, these would be made out of old hoop iron and uh, you just make them as you go um, to whatever size you require as part of the process of making any vessel. So the staves vary in sizes and widths. Um, it's important to ensure that the, the cask will have a balanced shape, that you don't put all the wide, wide staves together and all the narrow ones together. So you mix it up so it's a nice balanced uh, variety of staves. The secret behind doing this is that each time I put a stave in with my index finger here, I'm pushing it back against the clasp, keeping the pressure on at all times. Okay. If you don't keep the pressure on, they'll all fall apart. Right, when we come to the last gap, we can actually lift the hoop up. That will enable us to take the clasp out and then we can drop the last couple of staves in like so. Okay, we can then drop a hoop over the top, ensuring that the cask stands upright. If it's leaning over to one side, uh, it's not really acceptable. Um, in the past, they used to call it a lord. Um, I think the expression is drunk as a lord when you're <laughs> keeling over to one side. Um, to actually put tension on the hoops, we can use a tool called a driver, which is this one here. That would be placed onto the hoop. When you hold the driver, it's important that your thumb runs down the shaft of the tool itself. So it means if you did actually miss hit uh, the tool, it drops off the hoop, the tool will fly off and hit the floor and you won't catch your knuckles on the hoop as it goes down. So uh, if you want to do it like that, at your own risk. The next part of the process is to actually put steam into the timber. The traditional way of doing this is what we call firing. So we've got uh, a cresset. Uh, cressets are normally made up of old bits of hoop iron, different sized cressets for different sizes of casks. What we're then going to do is to drive this hoop, which we have in the center here, towards this end. And again, we'd use the ham and driver to do that. It might take you two or three attempts to get that hoop to the bottom here, or just above the bottom. This hoop would then travel roughly towards the middle and this one would travel a little bit further down. What's happened now is that this end of the cask is pulled in to the same diameter as the centre. So by driving these hoops down in this direction anymore, you will not be able to physically close those staves in. So what we need to do is to turn your cask over and start driving hoops from this open end. Now, if you look at all the hoops, regardless of the size, you can see that the hoops are splayed, so giving you two different diameters. So this part here is slightly wider than that edge there. So you'll need to find the hoop where the largest diameter would just catch on the top outside edge of the staves. By putting that hoop on and driving it down, the stays will be pulled into this smaller point. So by the time we've got one hoop driven to that position, the hoop which you initially, which would have been this one was in there, would have dropped back because it's become smaller. Then it's going to be a, a gradual process of applying smaller and smaller hoops. So you put one hoop on, drive it down, 
then a smaller one and a smaller one to eventually all the stays will pull in together. It doesn't really matter how many hoops it actually takes to do this process because as I said they're all working hoops. Take all the hammering, all the battering, they're all going to come off at the end of the day when you put your final hooping on.